in reading the lessons for today, I've had two, in some ways, very different reactions. One was a wondrous sense of profound gratitude that what God is doing is nothing less than a complete reversal of everything that the world prioritizes and holds dear. Wealth, political power, social connectedness, but that instead, who shows up? The barren woman who is thought to be cursed by God because of her childlessness. And she becomes the mother of more children than the woman who naturally can bear children. Over and over and over again, you have turned my wailing into dancing, we recited in the 30th Psalm. The wailing is about loss, coming under God's judgment, knowing that if God is against us, we are bereft. And there is no aid for us whatsoever. It is to that one where wailing is turned into dancing, celebration, provision, inclusion, no outcast, brought in. And as I began to read those lessons, what happened inside of me was this extraordinary level of deep peace because it was a reminder again that God has provided a way home. I, I have a way home. You have a way home. But in the midst of all of those places where there is the wailing and the shame, this is the God who comes to these very people and speaks life. So that the tax collectors as we read in the Gospel, are the ones who accepted John's baptism. But the Pharisees rejected, as the scripture says, God's purpose for themselves by rejecting God's baptism. So that for all of us who know what it is to be broken, and know that in the Savior there is no fear, in the Savior there is, in fact, mercy, and it is in Jesus that mercy triumphs over judgment that we find a way home. That's reaction number one. Reaction number two comes out of a conversation I had with a rector this past week who is feeling bereft. He serves as the rector of one of the highest crime areas of all of Central Florida. Most of his major people have moved out because they fear for their safety. The only people who are left who live in that neighborhood are the poor who can't get out. The people who, elderly mostly, who wants to buy their homes. Even if they have no mortgage, they also have no equity. And so they're stuck. They can't go anywhere. And so this tiny flock of people drive in from other parts of Central Florida to be with this church where they are so deeply loyal, quite honestly. And yet, what else happens after that, and certainly before dark, is that they all flee. I heard lots of stories about attempted break-ins and drug deals in the church parking lot. And it's a crime area. It's a war zone. So where is the word of redemption for them? Where is the no shame you have turned my wailing into dancing for them? It seems to me what God asks of us, if we really do believe that there is not just, oh yeah, I'm feeling better now, but real dancing, because we have been redeemed, a place in God's power and life where we, in fact, can, with real courage, begin to step into even that neighborhood. Because if we can't do that, 
what we're really saying is both that there are limits in my own redemption, so I have to take care of myself. Or even worse, that kind of demonic power is too strong. Because it is demonic. But Jesus Christ came, as it says in Hebrews, to destroy, strong word, the works of the devil. And so, will there be people who will walk into that neighborhood to bring the good news? That's the challenge of the no shame, the wailing into dancing. You see, it's not merely the fact that somehow I feel better and I have peace in my life, where before what I knew was nothing but shame and fear. It is that, but it is far more than that. It is, in fact, an empowerment for declaration, an empowerment to be, even in the midst of the worst and most difficult situations, and to be able to be there based on God's mercy and power, because all of us struggle with issues about courage, otherwise we're just being foolhardy, and a willingness in the midst of that to say, God, how do you want your kingdom to come in that neighborhood? And how can I be a part of it? Otherwise, what we have in that little church is a dying enclave. Which is why where we began was with the collect. Stir up your power and with great might come among us. It's explosive language admitting the fact that we are sorely hindered by our sins, including the sin that says, I like God to help me feel better, but I still want to do what I want to do. And to have the freedom in the midst of that to walk in the very boldness with which God boldly conquered the sin and the death in our lives. That's Advent.